How's that look from your angle? You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Previously, we found out that I messed up. So, welcome back to the channel. Let's fix that mistake. Appreciate you guys watching along. Beautiful Sunday. Hopefully it stays that way. It's supposed to rain in the afternoon, but these gussets, they hit, so it doesn't let them shut. So we're gonna, we're gonna clean that up and uh, see what we can do. We had to notch it just a little bit up on the top, so we gotta clean that up and then had to just smooth that angle out where it was welded. Now we're locked in at least on the one side. We'll go to the other side. Yeah. We're still in an okay boat. It's just annoying that I was, I thought I did such a good job and then I was like, actually. So last night I started grinding that down to clean it up. But yeah, it's always something. I always gotta look ahead. And then I, yeah, I didn't there. much better so i had to clean up that corner clean up in the back some there now it folds up that one's folded as you see the only thing i had to re-weld was there's a spring that actually holds this lock and i had to cut the uh, nut off that the spring loop went through so re-welded that but we're good we'll get it folded up i did start pulling out seed tubes since it's going to get new seed tubes new firmers I just wanted to see what it, it what it had. I got all the seed tubes have sensors except for one, which makes me think that box doesn't work because if they didn't put the effort in doing one more, I, well I do got two boxes. So I don't know if we're gonna put any sensors on this or if next year we're gonna see where we get to and ball out at that point or not. So this one doesn't have a sensor wire or a sensor on it which let me show you so this is a sensor and it looks across and it sees as seed goes down and it flashes on the monitor the newer ones tell you population and everything else used to tell you if uh basically you uh aren't planting in that seed tube so if it's plugged disconnected something's broke meters all messed up so yeah I don't know. I guess we should check and see if these sensors work or not. Correction. I got two that don't have any sensors. And the phone's ringing. So two out of the eight. So I don't know. We can look into if they work or not. Done messing with this till more parts come in. I got one seed tube I know is bad. I really don't think I'm going to run any monitor on this, which I really wish I was. But I think I'm just going to run it. We're going to see what we can upgrade to if this works out for next year. That's what I'm thinking. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll just put regular seed tubes in, no sensors. Because there is one that all the wires are chewed through on the edge. Yep. They're rubbed through on the edge. So, and we're missing two. You start adding that up. Well, all right. Let's get this pulled forward a little bit. We're going to build the cradle for that. Let me explain on, we also got to do the other boom, which I'd like to get to today. I don't have any help to put those hoses through, which is the pain, biggest pain. But on this power unit, 
or hydraulic unit. Previous videos, I struggled. Finally got it to work. I guess I didn't really explain everything. Somebody did ask, is this supposed to be vertical? I don't believe so. In every picture I see and everybody I know that mount them sideways, there's two bolt holes on the bottom. Um, it's not like the, the draw tubes down here. I think it's right in there. But I'm not sure to be exact. There's no directions. But the thing that didn't work. So I pulled these sol I pulled this actual uh, solenoids right out, the valve. Pulled the whole piece out. Could apply power to each one and it would shift it back or shift it forward, backwards, leave it in the middle. So I was like, okay, like that works. Why am I not getting fluid out of one side of it? So messed around messed around and as you all know then i finally went home next day i came in and i realized that the outer solenoid to pull it this way to apply fluid to this side was not able to pull it enough when there was fluid pressed against the valve so they had these extra spacers that were between each one and as you see, you put them at the ends. So they had the extra spacers that were between each one. So it did not have enough grab on that solenoid or on that valve to actually pull it through the solenoid to open up the valve to allow fluid to go this way. And there was people that said, oh, you got you to gotta, uh, bleed them. You can't put hoses on them. You're doing it all wrong. If you notice, there's fluid all up and down the side of the tank and everywhere else. And... We were blowing the caps off because I was running it with no hoses on at that time. I was frustrated. I didn't film the whole time because I was getting annoyed. I spent damn close to five hours trying to figure out this thing. There's no directions, no phone number. Now that I got it, I think we're good. Yeah, there's not enough fluid in it right now. It's got to be full because that's how you kill these things. But it leaks out of the fittings because they're not actually the right fittings. So... We got the fittings. We got to get some hydraulic lines made up. But we got to figure out where it sits over there because we're going to run one or two up to that uh, cylinder that we put on yesterday. We're going to run two to the back spread. And then we got the two that are on, but I think we got to lengthen them out that actually run the rotate motor. So now that it's good, it's working. I'm not exactly sure yet how I'm going to supply power to it. I think the truck's going to charge it some, but we're putting a battery back here to run with it. A lot of good comments as far as how to wire it because I'm not a wiring expert at all. But this fought me, and it was it was simply that they installed it wrong. So that in between made it a nightmare because I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't pull it all the way when, there, when the pump worked. When the pump wasn't running, you could actuate it and pull it all the way. So, update on that because I don't think, I guess I thought I explained it, but I guess maybe I didn't. But that's going to get moved over to here. And yeah, we got to figure out some running of the lines. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm going to run, if we're going to put a T in one of these and I'm going to run the gu guillotine valve. Um, since the only time you shut that is when you actually... Um, have an issue so you can leave it open most of the time so i don't know how they teed it through i guess i should ask somebody to send me a picture of why there's tees on it what else they they ran it to but, alrighty i gotta get some of this cleaned up we're gonna pull this forward we're gonna build the cradle to that's gonna go underneath the boom so it's not just sitting on that top you build a cradle up in the front holds the weight we also got to build the loop that holds that bracket down we're gonna put the hose between it but like i said i don't think we're gonna be able to get that hose a lot of people said oh now that you cut that hose shorter it's not gonna fit on there eh, if you notice we got quite a bit of sticking out so i think we're gonna be okay i didn't actually cut it yet i cut like two inches off because it was too long but once we get it up in the air yeah we can slide it in or we pull that forward we got some options so all right, let me clean this up. We'll get this started up, pull it forward so we can get right up on there. What are you doing? You having a good day? We just probably just spent the last 40 minutes hanging out here, thinking about life, eating. 
We got some Panera dropped off, so what'd you like the most? Mac and cheese? Your big mac and cheese or the chicken? Got an eight inch pipe, gonna weld that end and we're gonna bend it around since that's that's what I got. Hopefully we won't need any heat, but we might need some heat. But that will just allow me to work it around and hold it at the same time. We're definitely gonna have to get some more gas this week, even though we're close to the end of fabrication work. I think we'll be out. But if I weld this, And then we'll cut that off after. Definitely gonna need the heat. Eh, yep. That way it will bend right around itself. Dang. Put a little heat to that. Slowly bend it over. I don't know where the sparker is though. I don't know why it's not here. So I gotta look around. But I was like, hey, what is in the actual shoot box? Because my father said, Oh, I got the transmission for the 4.0 and this and that, which is interchangeable. But I think I'm going to go a different route. I think. I got to do some pricing. And I was like, okay. Um, so I was like, big box. So, yeah, we got some bushings, which uh, we use some of the. I don't know why he's, he got so many. 4.0 only uses three of those bushings. And then they're smaller for the rest of them. So, okay. So we can use some of that. And I was like, Alrighty, we got chains. We got graphite. There is the transmission that actually goes inside of them. But like I said, and then I was like, what are these boxes? Well, there's four precision meters. So uh, maybe I won't be sending my meters because I already got four of them. So maybe I'll just buy four more. I don't know. But yeah, I guess he forgot that these were in here. So that's cool. Half the planter is already done as far as being perfect. And there's the upgraded meters and everything else like that. So, alrighty. I gotta find something to light this torch on fire with and so that it will get warm and then we'll bend that over. Someday I'll have the right tools for the right jobs, but until then, we'll improvise. Hopefully, this works. Just cut the weld off, then we'll have the actual, I guess, cradle of that. Cradle. Not perfect, but pretty damn good. This side's higher because then it's on the back wall, so it will line it, drop it, clean up those edges. Start building the base. 
so the reason for this is so that one you don't wear that out two you don't wear the corner of this out so we want it just slightly we probably need two hands but i'm gonna put this underneath it just so it raises it up slightly i'll make two hands and then we'll be able to measure it So here you can see they double plated it so there's twice the thickness so which there we go so we got to measure that and we'll put a little plate on this side that should be good there the biggest pain of filming and doing this stuff the tank stainless steel so you guys don't stick to it because you're on a magnet i guess that steel that steel but we're gonna weld these in so i got the saddle base plate one leg we're gonna add another leg once we're done and go from the saddle down to the main beam across it give it extra support but i'll jump up there see if you guys can see what's going on That's what I figured I'd be long. I always can cut more off, so but we're gonna cut it at an angle so then it's real good. Might have to take just a little bit more because it's got that bow. How's that look from your angle? Ah, we got a little twist to her. Ooh. Ain't nobody ever gonna notice what I mean. Fix that twist. That actually looks halfway decent. Huh. I'm surprised. Ah, uh, damn. Yep. There we go. All done up. Decent. So, 
now as you see we got a lip between everything it's sitting right in the middle I came up extra on this side just so um, well I'm gonna make it so it stops so it can't keep pivoting on the gear but just in case it slides down makes it easy to sit back in the hole that is that's quality I like that right in the middle now that that is all braced up there looking good let's figure out where this is gonna go I was thinking about putting it in this box and building around it but I honestly think we're just gonna trim this box get this all out of the way get that placard off there get the I think that was a fuel tank I'm not sure or a fuel holder or something there get that off then we can mount probably two batteries because a lot of people have been saying you got to do the two battery feed um i do have wire i don't know if it's enough to run it all the way up to the front of the truck as far as the remote um we'll do a junction so that we can unplug and plug it and keep the remote separate that's what i'm figuring and then uh we'll have to feed some power back to the truck from uh back to the trailer from the truck to those batteries yeah because we got to keep in mind that that truck is actually positive to the frame at some point we should switch that around and get it right um instead of negative to the frame hmm okay thinking 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 let's cut that out of the way i had that cool idea of doing manure on the placard and some people were like uh yeah that's illegal so and they're right <laughs> so we're gonna try to stay as legal as possible so the placards will come right off well there it goes the pump is off it's gone guy in somerville who's a mechanic came and got it he was gonna put it in a bobcat and then he said oh it doesn't fit but he said i'm a mechanic I'll put it in something. I said, that's good for you. So, some money. I had to give him an extra strap because he thought it was smaller than it was. But he hooked me up with tw extra 20 bucks. So, alrighty. That took a little bit to get it loaded. But I figured he was going to show up and be like, ah. He showed up. He's like, oh, this isn't going to work. And I was like, oh, okay, no worries. And then he goes, you know what? I'll take it. So, I had to back this up. So, we'll get this pulled back forward. Motor's gone. I have nothing else on Facebook Marketplace, which is good because people of Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, as people say, Craigslist used to be better or is better or whatnot. You just get so many like, is it available? Let me think about it. Do you have more pictures? Do you know what it does? Like, do you want it or not? But it's gone. So I got nothing for sale. Nothing's for sale except everything's for sale nothing's for sale though yeah it's just a time suck anybody comes here anytime somebody comes here spent like an hour by the time you're sitting done talking loading blah 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 so alrighty let's see we're gonna cut this off that way we can figure out how we're gonna mount this and like I said previously People have asked, does it get mounted up vertical? But most of them that I've seen on trailers are sideways. Just gonna make sure you're you're full. And this, on the pictures of it, it says this is the filler, which, ready? It does have a dipstick on it. So that's how you check your oil. So it, get, it gets mounted this way. But this is gonna go over here. We're gonna figure out some batteries, run some cable. We just gotta clean this up. That's all rusty. What do we got? 
We on fire. No, seriously, we're on fire. Stop, it's flammable. Oh, it's a little safety and some symbol. But we're gaining. Yeah, cut it right out here. We'll box this back in across. Or we'll just cut right down the side because first time we go to wash this thing, it's going to be such a pain with all these nooks and crannies. That actually cleans that way up. Look at that. So I cut the floor back. Put a pump. I'll tap this back down. Um, like I've said, I don't know what I want to do. Probably going to cut these off because at least the sides. Because the second manure gets run down the side and is inside here it's just such a pain so probably zing right down the side zing across and then just clean it up we'll leave this because well one the lights attached to it and the fenders are attached to them and spot at least when it's time to wash this bad boy down we can run by and pressure wash it and it won't be all covered in manure and full and yeah, just the pain because this stuff is actually steel. That's stainless. This is steel. So, manure sitting inside of here would not do anybody any good. But that looks a lot better. Let me, uh. Well, here we go. There we go. Looks great. I'm losing most of my motivation it is sunday it's almost 6 30 so hopefully we'll get this finished up so i'll take these lines off we'll flip it over we'll probably just set it there because i'm not exactly sure i guess i got to get a battery or two and figure out what i want to do and where i want it to be but i'll loosen those lines that way we can just pick it up set it over there there is two bolt holes that come through the bottom. So my plan is either build a plate or go right through here and bolt on. Probably gonna go right through there. Um, we might make that far enough over so that the motor hangs over so nothing ever touches it. I don't know. Probably should put some rubber in between that so it doesn't vibrate, vibrate as much. Let me pop those lines off and then uh, we'll get it moved over. You know, I was trying to stay clean for the day. And I know everybody enjoys adjustables. That way you got every size. It's metric and standard. English? Is it standard or English? I don't know. Imperial? American? That's it. Oh, fractions and millimeters. Okay, a little bit of oil, nothing too crazy. So we'll get new lines made. We need it for the up-down boom. We need some for rotate, some for spread. And like I've said before, we got to figure out how we're going to run the guillotine valve. It's going to be a manual function because the amount of times I'm actually going to shut it will be very, very, very few. Hopefully. If not zero, you only shut that when you got issues and you got to open the pump, but it's handy, which we don't, yeah, we could drain it like the other ones, but usually it's a nice feature. It is a very nice feature actually. So that's why it's on there. Otherwise I will really wouldn't do that because yeah, 5,000 gallons, you can pop it open. When you got 10,000 gallons of manure and the pump's plugged with sand or something got stuck in it or you're just having a real, real bad day. Somebody a while ago mentioned that I should get a hydraulic maker. And I agree, I would love one. But Jared, who actually... Jared's been on the channel because he saved my pickup. Um, when I blew it up, he came and picked me up actually and brought me to his place. Brought my trailer with my pickup on it. Oh, this was two years ago. Right? Yeah. Um, Jared did one. 
and he figures he has twenty thousand plus dollars in it because yeah you can get the maker and stuff like that but it's the ends and then you're like well you can't just get like four of each end because you run right out of it so you got to get your common ends but then all of a sudden you're like well damn i don't have a good end that goes from this to that and like the chopper the chopper fitting ends are the expensive one they're metric and they're odd so i like the jpm they hook me up quite a bit on hydraulic stuff and uh that's why yeah they're really good wow. all right don't need this right now Someday I'd like a hydraulic fitting, but I got so many more things that I would spend twenty thousand dollars on before. And you gotta, yeah, I can't just go out. Currently, I'm not financially stable enough to go out and spend twenty grand on a fine on hydraulic fittings. Yeah, that that's what it really comes down to. It's twenty grand. And there's plenty of places around that if you really need one. Um, you could find one in an in emergency. Like there's plenty of roadside um, people that do it. So these are the fittings that came with it. To go from whatever it is. It's none. I don't even know what size this but. I got all of them. So we just got to figure out our measurements. Hopefully tomorrow will be a shorter day for work. I got to start early and we'll see where I get to. If that's the case, then I'll be able to run over and get the hydraulic fittings made, which will be good. Be good to get this back figured out completely in the next few days. We're going to run out of time. So people ask when they figure we'll start spreading manure. Um, I'd like to spread literally days before we go planting. That way I know all the nutrients is in the soil. Um, yeah, especially with years like this. That's why I got two trucks going or why I set up another semi so that two, three days of spreading and then chisel plowing right behind it, a day disc. And then the planter chasing the disc. And hopefully two days of planting, maybe three days of planting, will be done. I hate the whole spread out and haul some manure for a couple days, chisel plow, disc, plant some, then go back to haul manure. That just doesn't ap ap appeal to me. Minimal help means you got to be efficient with what you have. And that's, yeah, hopefully the disc... The 7520, hopefully we're boogieing this year. I know it needs some stuff, but the front, I still want to do that before we get into it. Um, I'd like to get the headliner in too, just make it more comfortable sitting in the shop. Should be able to. Hopefully we got AC. I heard AC refrigerant is up like five times as much as what it was last year, so I do got a can. But I'm not using it on anything other than my own stuff. And I guess my own stuff would be that and the chopper. Chopper leaks. we got to find that leak someday. But leaks enough by, if you charge it in the beginning of the season, by the time you get to corn, you're like, yeah, I could use a recharge. But get some of those chillier days, you're like, never mind. Okay, figure it around this way oh yeah we're gonna have to bump that up because that that's uneven there now yeah we don't want that vibrant that would act that will actually sit really nice so this is what I'm figuring and then we could put two batteries right here and then we'll extend this cord 
I think I got a section of this actually. I'll grab it before we leave. Send this cord up, put a plug on the front, and then this cord that is on here, have that go to the plug and then go into the cab. So then you get the functions of everything. But that would allow everything to go up. Yeah, I, I don't know how I'm gonna cover it. Maybe we'll make a light tin box, light gauge box and cover it up like that. Let me go grab that wire and make sure we got it. This was a hundred foot. I don't know if we got enough to do. I think the trailer's 34. And so this isn't running, this is not running the power. This is running the function. So that's one seven wire. How many wires are in here? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the seventh is this one. Oh, wait, there's an eight. This is eight wire? Uh-oh. Well, that don't help me then. Right? Yep, there's eight wires. Alrighty, we need some eight wire stuff. It's gonna look a lot better. I like it. So, we gotta get some eight wire stuff. I don't even know if that's eight wire. Can you get that? I don't know. We're gonna have to do some digging, but... Little tinkering today. Made for a good day. Fix the corn planter mess up. As far as the gusket gussets, that's good. Got that pump out of here. And it's starting to rain, so. I know some places got snow today. New York got snow. No. No. Well. Alrighty, I'm gonna get the planter moved out of my way. Gonna get this turned back around and pull it in. That way it's easy to get the hoses done this week. Um, yeah, at some point we gotta do the tractor stuff. As far as the, the Mac, the tractor. Um, yeah, so much to do, but appreciate you guys watching along, liking, subscribing. Hope you all are having a good time. I'm, I'm, I'm so ready to go into crop work and actually get rolling and get farming, but it's these little things that, well, this, none of this stuff is little. Um, this has all been quite some projects, but keep in mind For a newer trailer, you're looking at like 60 grand. So me spending my own time and energy to be into something for a fifth of that price. Yeah, definitely makes it worth it, especially for how much manure I move anyways. But efficiency and getting more done with less help and less time and everything else is where I want to be. So alrighty. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.